Welcome back to the channel everyone. I asked you guys in a poll here on YouTube which ship shop you wanted to see next and Kbots won. So here we are to look at the Kbot ship shop and let's dive right in. As you come into the entranceway you see these two ship types that look very very similar. This is the Dynastine class and on the right here we have the Maximus. This is the full version. This is a fully enclosed, fully adjusium armored for corrosion resistance for when you need to get in and out of those tasty, tasty areas with the rare ore, but with the corrosive gas cloud. Once they've come into the game, that is. This thing has the two collectors on the front and one mining laser. It also has another secondary feature where it can use its underside thrusters that are located around the ship to hover in the moon's gravity. So if you need to take cargo down to the moon, this can take 78 crates down to the moon's surface and not crash, which is quite beneficial. It's got a decent amount of stopping power with four box thrusters. Comes equipped with ISAN quad, has about 22 box thrusters and about 20 or so triangle thrusters on the back. If we jump onto the inside here, Oh, button didn't work. There we go. If we jump onto the inside here, you can see that the interior is nicely lit and has some interior decoration. You have six crates, six crates, and same on the inside. And then you've got this 3x3 three three crate area. Now, this ship is designed to take the new 3x3 three three crates when they become available, and hopefully, there'll be a decent benefit in storage space when you do so. You've got the two doors on each side, so you can come in here or here, depending on where you want to come in. At the front here, you've got the generator set up with the FCU, MFC, and the transponder. You've got plenty of space for YOLO code here. You've got a couple of free slots here. You've got the ISAN code and just general ship code here. And then an entire bank on this side, which you can use for your own code for the ship, should you wish to make any. The expansive cockpit pretty much gives you a completely unobstructed view of the asteroid belt while you're inside it, so you can clearly view any hazards ahead. And then you have the buttons up the top here, you've got the mining laser and collectors, as well as the ISAM readout, and then you've got nav lights. You can close all the doors from here, you've got landing range finders, and you've got the front range finders. The turtle mode here, and the cruise mode. This ship is not the best in its class uh, in terms of storage space or speed, mostly because it is completely sealed in and armoured, but it can get down to the moon and back and bring or take cargo with it and can go into the corrosive areas. Now the Minimus version over here is substantially cheaper. This could be used as an upgrade from the starter ship and you DIY upgrade it as you go, just like the starter ship itself. This doesn't come with any advanced mining, like the mining laser or collectors. The spare fuel rods are taken out, and you've still got space to put them back in, should you wish to do so. There are no receivers on top, and therefore it doesn't have ISAN, and the thruster arrangement has been stripped back again to save on costs. On the inside, you see the same. This has also been stripped out on the inside for the boxes. Now these have been left connected just to show you where and how to connect them. It's super easy, you've got pipes on one side, cables on the other, and all can access the appropriate points to do so. Now the main reason for doing this is when the new crates come out, there will be different types of crates. So if you wanted to have an item crate hauling ship, you could just replace all of this with item crates instead of these normal crates. Or if you're using it as an upgrade from the starter ship, you can move your crates from the starter ship into this and instantly be able to use more space. On the front here, the only main difference on the generator is this one is not enhanced, but feel free to add the enhancers yourself. There is no ISAN code by default, so you'll have to get that written into chips and slotted in, but you've still got the space to do all the coding yourself. 
Now I've left all the buttons the same here, so should you wish to use mining laser and collector later and add them on, that's already set up. You just have to match the names as well as all the things like the rangefinder, both landing and front to help guide you into asteroids. But yeah, this one would be completely manual mining with the pickaxe should you wish to use it, or if you swap the crates out at a later date, then you will not even need to mine. So that's those two classes of ship. Hopefully you will find a good use for them. Moving on to the next one, we have the Skywalker. And if you can't tell what it is yet, it is of course a pod racer. This thing goes just under max speed, has its eight box thrusters to give it that huge speed and is very, very minimal on the plating. The cockpit itself again is also minimal giving you the small amount of readout you need. You've got ice and mono on the right here and one small button right there to show you the access hatch. This is how you'll replace your fuel and you'll be good to go once you've done so. But yet this is uh, completely not needed this beam, it's purely in there for the looks. That's how you would refuel the ship as well. Cool lights on the front and yeah. That will get you from A to B pretty quickly. Moving into the next area now, we have the workhorse of the Kbot ship shop. This is the Buffalo. A lot of people move up to this ship from the starter ship just because it's so damn efficient. It's pretty cheap on its price at only 25 million. Comes with 166 crates and you've still got a mining laser and collector in there as well goes over a hundred meters per second if we just jump on the inside here you've got room to bring your friends along with these spare seats you've got spare room for extra code should you wish to write any extra code for this ship and it's got the same expansive cockpit on the front here it's a completely unobstructed view you've got your standard cruise and turtle mode the transponder button as well as the mining lasers and fuel hatches. This ship can refuel twice out in the belt, so you've got one set of fuel rods here, and if we come out here and just hit this button on the side, you've got another four hidden on these pods on the side. You've got plenty of reverse thrust here, and the forward thrust is a huge wall of thrusters to get you where you need to be. Down here we have the port shuttle, this is made by another member, Stack in the K-Bots. This is again another personal transport, this one not quite as thematic as the pod racer over there, but will still get you where you need to be very very quickly. Easy to use, easy to refuel, and it goes up plenty of fast with these thrusters. And lastly, this small ship here, the Avanti, is as cheap as it can be at three quarters of a million credits. Now this is made as a Vasama replacement or a K-Bot stylized Vasama replacement and is just meant to get you around large stations like Proya or Origin or you can take it out into the belt as part of a fleet as a scout if you have the capability to carry another ship with you. Either way it's a fun little ship, it's super cheap and will get you around the stations absolutely no problem at all. I also use this as a small salvage ship as it goes by quite unnoticeable thanks to only having maneuver thrusters at the back. So it can be quite good for using after the events to salvage. But yeah that's the Kbot ship shop, I highly recommend you come give it a little look, definitely take some of these ships for a test flight especially the Buffalo comes highly recommended by a lot of people within the community too. That is the Kbot ship shop, smash that like button if you liked and we will soon have tour around the Juratech ship shop. But until then, Kenator out.